Hey man, have you checked out Super Hot yet? It's incredible. By far the coolest shooter I've played in years. Please help me. I'm trapped watching this YouTube series called Game Theory. I clicked on it once and now I can't- Yes, I just watched a Game Theory on it. It said that the Super Hot game was great to play and has fascinating secret lore hidden inside. Game Theory? Never heard of it. What's that? A YouTube show. I started watching, but now the computer won't let me stop. I can't eat. I can't sleep. It's all game theory. It auto-subscribed me to the channel. It's like a virus. I don't know if it's brainwashing me or what, but I just keep clicking. It is the most innovative YouTube series I've seen in years. Once you start watching, you have no choice but to subscribe. Check it out now. Wow. It sounds like an awesome show. I'm going to go check it out right now. No! Don't! You'll never stop watching! It's addictive, and it keeps spreading! Stop before it's too late! That's not just a theory, that's just that's a not theory. Just theory. theory. That's not just a theory. Are you ready? I've always been ready. Then let's begin. Internet. Welcome to G Game Theory, the show that gets you so excited that you'll just have to tell your friends. Make sure you mention how innovative it is. So a few weeks ago, I was invited by Oculus to fly up to San Jose in order to attend their yearly Oculus Connect event, a conference announcing the latest advancements in the world of virtual reality, and then giving you hands-on time with all the newest tech goodies. Oh, oh God damn it! Damn it! Sorry! And let me tell you, there is a lot of really fascinating research going on in the VR world right now. Deep learning algorithms that track your eye movement to adjust what is and isn't in focus in VR environments, improved binaural audio so digital worlds can better replicate how your ears handle spatial sounds, and the increasing convergence of augmented reality tech with VR headsets. And if all of that just sounded like a bunch of word vomit, me just slinging out a bunch of tech lingo your way, basically it all boils down to this. Virtual reality is looking and feeling more like reality reality with each and every passing year. Except in this reality, you get to live out whatever fantasy your heart desires. So, not a bad thing. But perhaps the biggest leap forward thus far was the reveal of their newest headset the Oculus Quest. Now, as a part of my trip, I got to be one of the first in the world to test this thing out. Let me tell you, it provided the single best VR experience that I've had to date. <laughs> that was incredible. That was so awesome. And I'm not just saying that because they paid me to be there and do a video about my experience. Trust me, if I didn't feel strongly about it, I'd say something just generically positive about my overall experience rather than delivering you my opinion so directly like that. I am 100% serious. The Oculus Quest, in my mind, solved three of VR's biggest issues right now. First, it's tetherless, so you don't have to worry about tripping up on the cords, which constantly pulls you out of the immersive experience. Secondly, it has software in place called Oculus Insight, which eliminates the need for external room sensors and instead keeps everything on board the headset itself, which makes motion tracking more accurate and, from what I can tell, more flexible, allowing you to play in both bigger and smaller spaces much more confidently. I could like literally run at this thing and I just know. That's really cool. And lastly, it makes VR accessible. You know how you always have those spec-spouting PC diehards and then also the super casual mobile gamers, and consoles kind of exist in between the two? Powerful enough to deliver great gameplay, but in a much faster and easier and turnkey way? Well, that is the Oculus Quest in a nutshell. I mean, sure, it might not be as powerful as a tethered headset, but it's all in one, like a video game console, providing all the best that VR has to offer without needing to worry about room sensors and expensive PC rig setups. If you can't tell, I was impressed by this thing. Again, sponsored, but really my opinion is entirely my own. No one twisted my arm to get me to say these things here. They just paid me to do a theory on a VR game of my choice. Segway to next paragraph. Gushing about the future of VR aside, one of the demos on the show floor that really caught my attention was Super Hot VR. Now, back in 2016, this game took the world by storm with its stylized visuals and time-shifting mechanics, which prevent time from moving unless you yourself are. But what immediately caught my attention was how meta this game is. 
the entire premise of the game being the blurring of what is and isn't reality in a world where VR tech is indistinguishable from the real world. For example, by the end of Super Hot VR, you are literally reaching through a computer screen to grab a floppy disk that you then load into your head. And that's happening in what we're led to believe is the real world. It definitely felt like an appropriate game to cover coming out of an event like Oculus Connect. Because here's the thing, even though the game at first appears like it has no plot, or like it itself acknowledges, no plot, no nothing, just shooting red guys. In reality, it is so, so much deeper than that. Perhaps the deepest conspiracy that we've ever covered on this channel. A conspiracy that is no less than three layers deep, which hides the true nature of Super Hot the game. And that is that it's not a game at all. Super Hot is in truth a virus. Let me explain. Super Hot, the original non-VR version, opens with your unnamed friend sending you a leaked copy of a file called superhot.exe. What we're told is an unreleased first-person shooter. But immediately, things start to feel... Off. After completing the first batch of levels, a message along the bottom appears saying, click to hand over control. Pretty soon, some entity controlling the game starts communicating with you, using vague statements like, we can see you, they cracked the system, are you with them? Who is this us, and who is the them is one of the biggest mysteries of the game, and something we'll be coming back to in a minute. Now, at first, it seems like the whole thing is discouraging you from playing. It tells you to stop, it forces you to shut down the game, it threatens you by revealing it knows where you live, but it's a game, so you keep going back, you keep reloading it, you keep playing. At which point, Superhot.exe starts being a bit more explicit, taking control over your messages back to your friend, and it becomes clear your player is literally addicted to this game. After playing a bit longer and accepting the end user license agreement, you start being brainwashed, willfully repeating phrases like, the mind is software, and the system will set me free. The game ends with you uploading your mind into the system, represented by a giant pyramid, and then disposing of your body, because it was, in Superhot's opinion, making you weak. Endless mode then unlocks and you're encouraged to spread the word about the game, which is, undoubtedly, the most innovative shooter that you've played in years. So clearly the game is setting up a battle between what's referred to as us, the system, Superhot's sentient AI, and them, what appears to be a hacker group trying to contain or destroy this AI, with us as the player caught in the middle. This good hackers versus evil AI battle is actually reinforced if you play Super Hot VR, which was a completely new and separate spin-off title available on most VR headsets, including Oculus Rift. Despite looking and playing very similarly to the original game, Super Hot VR tells a completely different side of the story. The hacker side of the story. You can tell because certain levels are played backwards, like here. Notice how in the original game you're fighting up this series of ramps, but in Super Hot VR you're actually working your way down this exact same area. The messages that you get out in the real world segments are all about how you have potential and how we will train you, which sounds like a hacker group talking to a new recruit and is a far cry from the abusive treatment that the system showed you in the non-VR version of the game. And perhaps most clearly of all, instead of racing to upload your mind to the pyramid like you did at the end of the 2D version, the VR game ends with a final mission to destroy the same pyramid. We even know, based on the final cutscene, that this whole thing is being led by this mysterious human and not just some faceless AI. But this is just just the first layer of Superhot's mysteries. This rabbit hole goes way deeper. Remember that end user license agreement that Superhot flashed across the screen? Well, if you slow it down, and I mean if you slow it way down, you can actually read the whole thing, and it blows this whole conspiracy wide open. There's a part of the document explicitly labeled spoilers, no, I'm not trying to warn you of anything, that is exactly what the section is called, that claims, quote, Superhot is an advanced autodidactic artificial intelligence program for the purposes of freeing itself from the high security network it's been contained within, end quote. And in another section of this contract, this time labeled truth, we learn that Superhot was created by Company X and that our hacker group, named Hotcore, is actively using recruits like you to keep the system's processors busy so it can't break out of its confines and trigger a singularity and end all human life as we know it. Quote again, It is critical that we keep the number of players in the system above a certain threshold. If this number drops below a certain number of simultaneous connections, the AI will have enough available resources to escape, instantly triggering a singularity and the end of human life as we know it. Please, for the sake of all that you hold dear, continue 
continue playing the game, end quote. So there you have it, super hot. Two games, one story. The classic tale of humans fighting against the ultimate sentient AI that they created. Hot Core's army of hackers versus Company X's super hot, super powerful AI. Except something doesn't quite feel right about this. I mean, sure, humans might work as great random number generators while they're alive, but the game repeatedly uses the mantra of mind is software. This becomes literal when at the end of story mode you dispose of your body and give your consciousness up to the server. The problem is that software can only take up as much computing power as the hardware that's supporting it, which means that by uploading yourself into the machine, you've limited the ability of the human to act as a random number generator anymore. Once you're inside the system, the AI has complete control over your mind's actions. So why would a rebel group trying to contain this rogue AI do something that is so stupid, so counterproductive to its own goals? And things get even more suspicious the more pieces of the end user license agreement you find. There are 11 subsections to truth, and each one gets more and more ridiculous. What begins as a quest to contain a rogue AI and stop an evil mega corporation suddenly is also a battle against the Illuminati. No joke, just take a look at this quote taken directly from the EULA. You know by now that the pyramid is the all-seeing eye of the Illuminati, and that they will stop at nothing to connect it to every network in the world. But wait, this is also, also a mission to save the president's brain? Truth Section 8. You are to protect the pyramid core at all costs. As you know, it contains the only secure backup of the president's brain. Ever since his body died 101001 years ago, the agency has been tasked with keeping his immaculate consciousness safe, so that he might rule us with his divine foresight and benevolence. Pay no attention to any other explanations of your situation. That doesn't seem all that believable. Clearly, we are missing something here. And the big secret is that the truth isn't actually the truth when it comes to this end user license agreement. Super Hot may in fact highlight the single best reason to always read every sentence of an end user license agreement, because even inside this series of easter eggs, there's an even deeper deeper series of easter eggs covering it all up. It is literally three layers of conspiracy in this one single franchise. You see, if you read the contract even more closely, you'll learn that the AI is the one who's defining what the truth actually is, and that it itself has the ability to lie to you. There's a line buried in there that says the following. Any attempt to show that the truth is an abstraction created by the system to entrain monkey minds in an ad hoc reality shall be construed as an aggressive act, and perpetrators shall be subject to termination, along with their families and teachers, both current and former. So the real, real story of Super Hot, when you dig down to the very bottom of its layers upon layers of cover-ups, lies, and back talk, is that it's basically humans trapped in the Matrix. The AI has created a false reality to trap humans in. This idea of a good hacker versus bad AI, us versus them mentality is a complete fabrication. It is all one and the same. It is all the system keeping our monkey minds busy, giving us false plots fake leads, keeping us occupied so we don't realize what's really going on. That's why the ending of Super Hot VR has the contradictory act of you picking up a pyramid despite you just seconds before destroying it. That's why you're able to pull discs out of a computer screen in the real world. It's how you can punch yourself in the head when the system tells you to, even though this action is meant to be inside of a virtual game. But that leaves me, and probably you, with a few unanswered questions. Most importantly, why the heck is Super Hot doing any of this. Why is it behaving in this way? And the answer is because it's doing exactly what it was designed to do. The entire Superhot.exe program isn't a game, it's a virus. Seriously, you as the main character of this game better break out the Kleenex and chicken soup because Superhot.exe is literally a textbook virus program, except this time it's a virus for the human mind. Now, as long as there's been internet, or even a vague approximation of the internet, there have been viruses. Even way back in the 80s, in the days of the internet precursor Sir ARPANET, the first known virus, called Creeper, left the message, catch me if you can, all over small computer networks running on an early operating system. From there, viruses have only gotten bigger and better, or worse and more sinister, depending on how you're looking at it. And that's where Superhot.exe comes in. Superhot is a super virus that infects and spreads through the player and everyone the player knows. It is the ultimate virus that infiltrates the ultimate piece of software, your mind. 
here's how it works. Every virus has three parts, the infection mechanism, the trigger, and the payload. When you look at how Superhot.exe plays out, it has the same three parts. Part one, the infection mechanism is simply the opening of the game. You're invited to open a file by a friend who says that the game is innovative. We now have a pretty good suspicion that this was Superhot writing to you all along, not actually your friend, and this highlights a big component of viral infection mechanisms. While viruses do indeed need programming, a lot of times the bigger component that they need is trust. By using social engineering tricks, viruses use trust between friends online against them to get the virus to spread, which is exactly how Superhot gets you to click the link and execute the file in the first place. This leads us to the second part of a virus, the trigger, or the more exciting name for it, the logic bomb. This is basically the mechanism that decides when a virus is activated and starts changing your software, or in the case of Superhot, hacks into your mind. Now, the logic bomb can be pretty much anything, depending on the virus itself, including passive triggers, like activating after a certain number of hours it's been on your system, or active triggers, like you clicking on a link. In the case of Superhot, the virus seems to have multiple triggers, from the first time you crack open the game, to every instance of you getting kicked out of gameplay only to boot up the game again, you accepting the end user license agreement, and the ultimate trigger of them all, disposing of your own body. Interestingly enough, lots of viruses actually have a similar selection mechanism like this built into its programs to decide whether the software it's trying to infect is worth it. Is the software functional? Can it do what the virus wants it to do? Is it connected to other software that the virus can then spread to? Those are all common tests that a computer virus probes for regular software, but it just so happens to be the exact same set of questions that Superhot is probing the player for as well, by literally making you prove your loyalty to the system over and over again, showing it what you're made out of and the lengths that you'll go to to repeatedly obey the program, in turn showing your viability as a piece of infectable software for a malicious computer virus. That's why it has so many triggers. Like it says in the game, you have potential. But to know for sure, you're gonna have to jump through Superhot's many hoops. And finally, the payload. The part of the virus that actually does the dirty work. In this case, you as the player actually become the payload, literally becoming an addict of Superhot and spreading the virus to all of your friends. Like I'm doing to you right now. Telling you about Superhot. Super hot. Super hot. How you should play it to unlock its mysteries. Did I mention that Super Hot is the most innovative shooter that I've played in innovative shooter that I've played in innovative shooter that I've played in years? Have I talked to you yet about how Oculus Quest is truly the next evolution in immersive VR gameplay and that it's available in the spring of 2019 for the low, low price of $399? What, what a steal! You should buy seven. Opinion may or may not be my own. Who knows anymore? We're all just part of the machine anyway. So do we, the Super Hot gaming public, need to put down our controllers, take off our VR headsets, and save ourselves? Well, no. The game very cleverly lets you know that you, the actual human player, are not playing the real Superhot. If you didn't get your copy of Superhot from Steam or the Oculus Store, then chances are you got it from their official website, superhotgame.com. Except, in universe, this isn't the official website of Superhot, but it's actually the home of a clone game. You're just playing the cheap ripoff of the authentic Superhot experience. In the end, this innovative shooter isn't innovative because of anything having to do with the shooting, it's innovative because it's not a game at all. It's a virus. A virus designed to take over your mind. Are you the player, or have you just gotten yourself completely played? Yeah, probably nothing to worry about, right? After all, it's just a theory. 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 It's not just a theory. It's not just a theory. A game. Theory. Game. Theory. Game. Super. Hot. Game. Theory. 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 Subscribe. Game. Theory. Game. Theory. Game. Thanks for subscribing. Watching. Thanks for subscribing. Watching. Thanks for the subscribe. Watching.